<laughs> Why do other players flame me when I use Red Dot on MPX instead of Holo? People just aren't as inclined to use the Red Dot because it's less efficient. Right? If the Red Dot was smaller in size, I think a lot more people would actually use it. But because it's so small and or so big in size, it takes up a lot of your screen. Like if you aim at someone head level, you can't see their head because the fucking Red Dot blocks it. And a triangle doesn't make sense logically because the bullet doesn't go in the center, but at the tip of the triangle. So the hole just makes the most sense, obscures the le least vision-wise. I personally would use red dot if it was a smaller dot. I, I personally would. Like, it should be a red dot, not a red blob. Yeah. Because, like, the actual center is what matters in a scope, right? In the red dot, the dot is like that. Right? In the holo, it's like this. And then, like, you have this tiny center dot. Like, tiny center dot, right? So you can easily aim at someone's dead center. And on triangle, on red, the bullet goes here. Not center mass, but up top. So people are logically more inclined to use the holo because it obscures the least vision. You can actually see what you're aiming at, and it's more transparent. Whereas the red dot isn't. In a triangle, the bullet and recoil goes at the tip. That's why Holo is the most commonly used scope. They should rework Red Dot? I mean, the things that bother a lot of Seas players is Ubisoft not changing stuff. Like, why can't we change your reticle color? Why can't we have a colorblind mode? Like, some people are colorblind, they can't see Claymores. Like, why can't we... Like, why is the Red Dot so big? Why isn't it smaller? Like, why, why are the scopes not all balanced? It's those, like, super small things that have a huge impact that a lot of people are, like, disappointed with. Because people would like to be able to alter those things or play Red Dot. Like, why can't we play Red Dot? Why is Red Dot so bad, you know? And it makes sense. Like, the the, the reasoning... Default cam? The reasoning for their frustration is, is well placed. The game is five years old and games like Valorant already have all of those features and more. And that game is in beta. This game has had five years of feedback and, and groundwork and we still don't have those things. And that's why all the controversy around Siege kind of came out with the release of Valorant. Because how does a game that's been out, well, that isn't even out yet, have all those things while we're still asking for them for years to come? Imagine you're colorblind and you cannot see your own scope and you cannot see claymores and, you, and people blend in because of colors. In a game that has millions of dollars a year in esports. That's terrible. And it's probably even more terrible for people that play the game for fun and they die to invisible claymores because they're colorblind. Like, imagine being at a birthright downside in a video game because that it doesn't have colorblind friendly settings which every game has these days it's like a industry standard i would say so that's a shame thank you honey honey prime's up and that's why like personally if we had less operators come out and less new maps but more of those like core features like the smoke rework, like the smoke grenades. Like we have like the scope changes. Maybe have like a whole season of like bug fixes like Operation Hell 2.0. And we kind of just went back and we focused on like the, the actual foundation of the game. The hell, fighting cheaters, matchmaking, reworking the rank system, the ranked map pool. Like I feel like the game, even though we're not getting anything new, would actually get such a refreshness feel to it that it would bring new and old players back. That's pretty much where I'm from. Uh, that's like, that's my stance with Ubisoft. Like, I'm not blaming them for not doing it, but I am kind of disappointed by the fact that they aren't doing these things. I understand that you gotta make money, and to make money, you gotta make new stuff. But if you just keep making stuff on a ground foundation that isn't stable, you know, the tower's gonna tilt and fall over and crash eventually. And that's pretty much what's happening right now, in my own opinion. Archive's dead, alibi. I mean, it looks very clear. One guy in Ami, I believe. And Ami, Ami, Ami. Vigil. You can run back now. He's on my ping. I mean, that guy should just run to security after killing the gang there. Got him? 
Is dead? Nice. Uh, dead person. And one of you guys hold my 90 cam, the mine may suspend it. Oh, guys, what's these stairs? Sorry? E -bomb. Bomb, okay. Smoke, I think. I can do vertical play. Can you hold my main source flank? Yeah. Can't shoot. Oh, I'm single fire. No! My gun went into single fire, dude. Do I join for the last guy or no? Uh, I have one. One sec. Okay. He's on side somewhere. I hear him. I'm gonna join from main door. I'm gonna join B first. B is clear. I don't see him. What the fuck is he? Oh, in, in, in blue. In blue. You can chop with me and plant. Okay. Hold my cam, guys. The cam I just put. Nice. Nice. I don't think they're watching it. <laughs> Thank you, Jonathan. Press sub do I get your charm? Yes, sir. Auto automatically, if you synchronize your accounts. Like, could you be add some kind of new sites to this game for real? I mean, a new site would be sick, like a... Like a flip, flip scope, or like a coyote from like Battlefield, or... Because like we have, for example, like we have the Russian scopes, right? And they're so useless and pointless. And I even think they said in the patch notes that they want to get rid of those scopes and like just have normal scopes. So why not just mainstream that every single gun has a new scope, which could be anything. It could be any scope. It could be a 1.5x zoom. It could be, you know, anything. Thank you, Hazen, for the prime sub, sir. Will I get bored of playing Siege for so long? It's my job. Playing Siege for me isn't about having fun or not having fun. It, I gotta play it when it's bad and when it's good. I gotta play both. That's why I'm such an advocate to fix those groundbreaking changes. Like when you rappel in a window and you go flying and teleporting and like the sound being bad because it's those small things that add up over a long time that frustrates the players the most, right? And as someone who plays the game 10 hours a day every day at least and someone who makes a living out of it, I feel the impact of those bugs more than most people because I invest so much time into it and I, I'm exposed to those bugs more frequently. And that's why I've spoken so much about what I want to fix about the game. People just seem to take my opinions the wrong way and see it as like I'm just harassing Ubisoft, but... I'm like very passionate about the game. The game is my bread and butter. It makes my living. I have the most to lose, like content creators, pro players, and developers like we argue about the most to lose of anyone because it's our job it pays our our wage and it's our fun it's our friends it's our circle of people i just want the game to be better you know monka s bro Like, I want Siege to be the game that people go, wow, that's a great game, you know? I want the game to succeed. I, I really, truly do. And I think that Ubisoft could fix a lot of things very simply if it just, like, had help. I'm not gonna kill a default cam. I can't be bothered. Oh, shit! All right, did. All right, did. All right, this fucking guy. That was the same Ash player ventilation earlier. I couldn't melee or shoot because of the animation of the hammer, so I I couldn't win. But holy shit, he scared me. That's the same guy that was in ventilation on Ash with the punch hole when I walked past him. He fucking loves the corners, dude. He loves the corners. Uh, so in Apex, there are, there are pro players, but not much money to get. Well, the money that you can get in a pro game doesn't matter. Whether a game is good or bad isn't defined on price pool. Both League of Legends and CSGO actually has quite small price pools, especially a few years ago, compared to many other esports titles. Siege, 
actually had about the same amount of money as CSGO did. Um, it, besides the amount of Thomas that we have than CSGO does. I guess CSGO Major was only a million dollars. Invitationals for us was like 2.7. Right? So, uh, price money doesn't define how good the pro scene is, how big the pro scene is, or how good or how poor the game is doing. Like, look at Fortnite. Fortnite's price pool is the biggest in the world, together with Dota 2 is international. And I wouldn't really say Fortnite is a good or a big esports title, per se. It's just inflated because of price pool right if you have fortnite right you have fart fortnite right and you invest 50 mil right into esports or you have league of legend or csgo and you invest 10 million right why is fortnite very popular because the fucking number is inflated as fuck and they need to have an inflated price pool because they need to attract viewers as well as players. Everyone's going to play Fortnite because if you win a single tournament, you're a fucking millionaire. And that's literally what's happening. When you win a Fortnite tournament, you get so much money. Right? Winning a CSGO tournament doesn't get you that much. But it's not about the price money. That's not why you play professionally. And the price pool numbers aren't reflected by how good the game is, how good the game isn't. If you have a game that isn't up to par, what you will do is increase or increase the price pool. So if you're a pro player, if you're an up and coming pro player and you look at price pool, going pro in Fortnite is the most the way to make the most money. Period. It is. Right? But for all the wrong reasons. For all the wrong reasons. And when you are a pro player, the last thing you should look for is price pool. It's the last thing.